Welcome to Sports Connection. I'm Darren Joins, Williamson County Schools Athletic Director, and we've got a sub today. He's back. Dr. Jeremy Qualls is back with us. Tate's uh, on assignment, so to speak. You know, he does have a full-time job, but he does volunteer his time to be here, so we appreciate Tate. But what a special treat on Sports Connection to have Jeremy Qualls back. So I'm just glad to know that I was about the sixth call, that <laughs> all the other five are on assignment as well. And I know much of the chagrin of our friends and fans in Gallatin, I am back. And it's great to be back. I appreciate you uh, even picking up the phone to call me on this. Uh, it's, it's special time of the year, as you know, uh, going into Wilco's. And it's, uh, it's pretty stressful for you, and I know the workload. I'm glad I'm not having to do it right now. Well, I noticed, uh, you know, we've been around each other for several years, and uh, this is the most fresh you've looked this time of year. I mean, you, <laughs> your eyes are clear. You look well-rested. It's nice. I, I just know, I don't think, I hope the public knows uh, the amount of work that goes into this, this uh, uh, process of creating the Wilcos of what you're doing right now, man. It's, it's, a, it's a major undertaking. There's a lot of people behind the scenes. I know you'll get to that, but uh, it's, pretty, it's pretty special. And it's, it, it's, it kind of takes a, a life of its own. And you've got to just get on, on top and ride it for eight seconds and hope that it goes, <laughs> hope, hope that it goes okay. Well, about this time next week we'll know. Yeah. But I'm, I'm predicting success. You, you will be fine. You will be fine. <laughs> well, like you said, uh, obviously it's an event that you got started in fact, because we haven't really talked about this on air, talk about how that even came about, starting the Wilcos. And this is year seven, by the way. Well, well truly, it, it really, I mean, you know, all things in education are stolen, so go steal away, right? I mean, that's the old saying. Uh, I, I was literally trying to think of an event. Everybody at their, each individual school has their own, in the sport, uh, you know, has their own little situation where they give out plaques and awards and doing things. And I'm thinking... You know, as you go down the list, uh, af after a year goes by and you start looking at those, those students that are uh, going on to college or whatever the case may be, and you're sitting there going, that's unbelievable, the amount of talent that we have. So how do we, how do, we do something different? I was riding a bike. I was sitting there thinking it was during the week of Jimmy V week, and they were talking about the foundation and how the ESPYs were coming up, and I was like, that's it. We've got to create something like that. So uh, we, we came up with the process of saying the top three – of each sanctioned sport is going to get in the building, and uh, that's what we did. The first year, it's funny, we did it at um, downtown at the Franklin Theater. I, I took uh, one of the worst bashings to my face I ever <laughs> took because somebody didn't get in, and I, I realized then at that moment something special was created because if they were willing to do that to me, that, they, that meant they wanted to get in. So uh, it went from uh, 250, 270 to I think 1,100 that last year. So. It's, it's grown. It's, it's grown. It, it, Franklin Theater one year, right? That's We did Franklin Theater two years. We did it solely there, and then we outgrew the space, and we split time with the theater and the factory and had to do a simulcast back and forth, which was an absolute IT nightmare. But we pulled it <laughs> off, and then the next year we're like, okay, let's just push it all to the Franklin uh, uh, factory at Franklin because we knew that it could, it, could, it could host all those people. Well, it's a special location. It's a perfect location. I mean, you could see the day we may outgrow that. Who knows? But uh, right. pretty, pretty special having it there at the factory. Yeah, well, it, it, you know, I, I hated to leave the Franklin Theater because it gave that Radio City Music Hall feel. It's really cool. The Art Deco, it's small, it's intimate, really neat uh, setting as you come in. But the, the factory gives you the, the red carpet ability of doing what you guys have done. So awesome, you know, how, how you do the red carpet. Uh, that, that whole red carpet show is my favorite part of the, of the whole thing because everybody gets their chance to spotlight. They feel special. The Walker Chevrolet vehicle picks them up, drops them off. They get interviewed on the red carpet. You guys do a fantastic job of interviewing them, and I just think that's a really special part. And that place really lends itself for that particular part of the event. And had some pretty special guests over the year over the years walked through too, right? Yes, we have. We, we were fortunate enough uh, that in one year we had, uh, obviously John Robinson is now involved in the event of giving the team of the year uh, in the past. And we had uh, Coach LaViolette at that time who was the head Preds coach. And uh, the one and the only, <laughs> Vince Neal, the head uh, lead singer of, of Motley Crue came through as a friend of one of our VIPs and sponsors. And, uh, you know, you, you sit up there and you think about that. A high school event with two, uh, with a head coach of a major sports, professional sports organization, a GM, and a lead singer of, uh, of Motley Crue. Now, Tate does a great job interviewing people, but I'm telling you, 
He was a little starstruck Tater, with old Vince Neal. He doesn't get too tongue-tied, but I'm telling you, when he, he showed up, he was just this, this, this look <laughs> on his face. Mr. Producer needs to pull that clip and show it. But, uh, and then he, he throws to me to ask a question. Yeah, I wasn't like, ready. When does he ever do that, right? <laughs> Dropping dimes, man. He's throwing it out there to you. Say, look, I can't handle this. Kickstart my heart. BJ to you. I'm like, what is he doing? It was great. Yeah. It was fantastic. Well, we're looking forward to it, and we appreciate you uh, getting this event started. I know the folks in Williamson County really appreciate it. It's a great event not only for the athletes and the coaches, but their parents, and I would say the community. It's a great community event. It, they deserve it. it. It's what it's about. We're, we're here for it. ain't about me. It ain't about, they, the, the kids, the, the, the athletes, the, uh, the parents, and specifically the, the, the coaches, the time and effort put in that is put in during the season, those kids deserve an event that's second to none that nobody can compete with. And it looks the part, it feels the part. Uh, I mean, like I said, we, we, I came up with the concept and people ran with it. I mean, I, I was fortunate enough, as you well know, uh, when you start this process, we started with three people and I think that last production meeting, including yourself, we had 32 people in it. I mean, so, it, you know, you get all these people that want to help, but those kids, the athletes and those coaches, they deserve an event like this. You know, it's pretty special. I remember Coach Kirby once telling me, he's like, you know, they may never play college ball, they may never play another day, but they'll always remember this event. And I knew then, if Coach Kirby pays me a compliment, which <laughs> might have been the only time, that once again. In fact, I may need to verify that yes, just to make sure that's it, true. It reassured me, too, that, that you know what, that's, that this is, all the work is worth it because they deserve it. No doubt about it. Hey, before we talk about our finalists, something else that you and I got to be a part of, and we're very pleased to announce this, make it official, that the WCS Sports Conference is partnering, partnering with the Tennessee Titans, and next spring we will have all nine high schools that compete athletically. We'll have a girls flag football team. TSSAA is also involved, and we're just so honored as a district to be asked to be the school district who's piloting this program. And uh, yesterday, uh, we had an opportunity to go down to Nissan Stadium. It was a very special press conference. Uh, pretty neat deal for these young ladies to be able to play some football next spring. Well, I think it's a testament to, to, to our district. Uh, the things that have been done is a testament to you, you, you uh, uh, picking up that torch and doing the things that you do. I mean, you, you've done a remarkable job, and they knew, they, knew who to, they knew who to reach out to. I mean, I know you're a former Sumner County guy, but they're not going out to Gallatin and <laughs> those places asking them to do it. They come here because they know that somebody like you with your leadership skills will be able to get that done. And like you've, you know, you've done it, you've got nine high schools, you've got coaches involved, you've got these, these females involved, and I know that you're going to get into the amount of folks that have, have shown interest. But uh, uh, I want the people to understand, too, that when you say we have a partnership with the Titans, that, that's not lip service. That is a true partnership in more than one facet, which we'll get into later, too. But a true partnership with the Titans is pretty remarkable. When a professional organization comes in and says, we're partnering with you, the TSAA knew exactly who to call. They called you, and it's a perfect, it's a perfect storm of, of a collaboration of something that is so trailblazing. And I even told yesterday Coach Hughes, who was there, uh, Fairview, I said, just wait till you see the crowds. I said, it's going to be pretty crazy. You're talking about the football team's going to get behind this. All these, these school cultures are get behind this. It's going to be huge. Well, what's been great about this, and we talked about this yesterday, is all the coaches, hey, will you guys, will you be willing to be a consultant or help or coach the team? It's been overwhelming. In fact, I was talking to a, a coach before the show today. I'm in. I'm in. Whatever I need to do. I'm going to make it happen. So it's, it's pretty exciting when you get – because, listen, we want to make – this is going to be legit now. It's not going to be something that's just cutesy and fun. It's going to be a legitimate athletic option for the females in Williamson County in the spring. Now, what we got to make sure we do, we don't want to get in the way of our sports that are already sanctioned. It's going to be a little bit tricky for us in terms of making sure we still give those young ladies a chance to pilot and be a part of this eight-game eight season – but we don't want to take away from them being on the track team or the softball team or one of those. So we've got some logistical kinds of things to work out. But, you know, you talked about this, uh, sent out a survey at the end of the school year, well over 800 people answered. And we're talking like 600 people saying, yeah, I'm in. I'd love to play. So you start thinking about that, 
we might be in a number situation of, dang, we've got a lot of people wanting to play. So it's, it's super exciting. And for people watching, I mean, that perspective is on par with our male football teams, that number. So you're, you're talking district-wide, a large number. It's going to be huge. You know what I love most about the whole thing, truly, is the fact that we're all in, right? All in, one conference, everybody's in. You've got nine teams coming off the bat. I don't like this. We're going to throw a couple schools in there and see how it works. No, we're going nine teams in. Uh, you know, and everybody, this is a team effort. TWAA, like I said, Titans, you guys, uh, Tate and Matthews Team Sports and Adidas coming all in together on this thing to make this thing happen, be special for those females that are going to play. It's going to be remarkable. Well, not what I like too, uh, yesterday uh, at, at the press conference and uh, Tate and his group down there at Matthews Team Sports did a great job with the Adidas uh, uniforms, uh, had, had one representative from every school. Pretty heavy hitters in terms of athletes in that group, too. Alyssa Andrea, just to name one. Two-time cross-country state champion. She was the Fairview representative yesterday. And, and the list, I mean, we could go down that list, it goes on and on of, of what impressive young ladies those are in terms of athletically. So uh, we're going to get some good athletes coming out for football. No doubt about it. And we're just super excited about it. Uh, something else that... Uh, that I think it'd be worth mentioning at this time. We've got a group. You talk talk about that relationship through the outside the lines program, which you were talking to me about as soon as I got here teaching marketing. You said, "Hey, I've got this idea outside the lines. Here's what I want to look about." So tell our audience about that. So being as the executive director of, of college career and technical education, there's a work based learning piece in there where kids can go and get on job training with with uh, employers and get school credit, get class credit for that. So being in your position uh, a few years ago when you were in marketing and we were talking about putting this together and, and, and now that I'm in this role and you're in this role, it's a perfect time to do so. Uh, you know, for two months now, uh, three months now, uh, you and I have been meeting with the Titans and talking about the flag football piece and talking about what does it look like to partner with the Tennessee Titans in an academic space. And uh, it's pretty phenomenal once we discussed and went down that rabbit hole and kind of served up to them about some ideas. They really, really put those ideas even, uh, multiplied it even further and talked about, hey, we want this group to come and work with our creative agency of talking about theme nights and talking about, like yesterday, we were talking about um, uh, the Jacksonville game coming up the Outside the Lines group and the Entrepreneurship Innovation Center as a think tank are going to really plan that entire game because it's the youth night at Nissan Stadium. So you think about that. You think about we're not just doing internships. We're not doing shadowing days. We are a part of that creative group that is uh, Surf Menendez and his group at the Titans uh, organization. And, and the partnership piece, the president is part of this. The, the director, the vice president of marketing is a part of this. Uh, the, 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 the creative, entire creative agency. This is not just one person saying, y'all go do this and make it nice and cute. This is a true partnership. And we could not be more excited to start this outside the lines group. And what those kids do, it was by uh, uh, interview process between Coach Jones and myself. Uh, we reached out to other CTE programs, digital art designs, TV film, marketing, uh, you name it. Anybody in that space, IT. Anybody in that space that wanted to get uh, a resume builder and do this um, to interview. So we interviewed those kids. We selected those kids. We could not be more pleased with the groups that we have. Pretty good group, right? Talk about them a little bit. Oh, man. Well, we've, you know, you've know, you got a young man named, by the name of Brooks Taylor that uh, went with us to the Titans organization, uh, the, the unveiling of the, of the uh, flag football league. And he was behind the scenes with the cameras. And we had uh, Tia Atkinson, who is a marketing student at Page, who's actually uh, was in front of the camera as one of the uh, uh, ambassadors for the football league from Page High School. And she did interviews, uh, spoke at the event behind you. You interviewed her. She spoke so well at the interview and then got interviewed by all the, uh, uh, the channels. And then we had Caitlin Cohey from Renaissance High School. People are asking, who's Renaissance High School? Renaissance High School is a CTE high school here in WCS that... A school that you've fallen in love with, by the way. I have, by the way. It's an interview process there. They only run about 880 to 200 students there. It's an interview process to get in. And they don't have any extracurricular sports 
uh, or, or programming, but they have it's Apps Academy, Arts Academy, or uh, uh, you know the things that they do there with audio engineering, creating apps and arts, and it's pretty remarkable. But anyway, we've we've got a female from there that helped us with the logistics yesterday. So we've got a ton of things. And what they're going to do is work with you, uh, help uh, the WCS Sports Conference from behind the scenes, do stuff, game day, whatever the case may be, and at the same time working with the Titans to produce content. And she couldn't be there yesterday, but uh, McKinley, M yeah. McKinley yeah. part of the EIC program. McKinley Johnston is an EIC student, Summit High School volleyball player, extremely talented. All these kids are so talented. She's kind of going to be the manager of the group. Uh, and it's just it's going to be fun to watch this thing mature and grow and see – who all comes on, on board with that? Well, and let's, uh, let's give our audience a chance to see some of that work. Let's take a look at this video that Brooks Taylor of Ravenwood High School put together at the press conference. Dr. Qualls, that's pretty professional. Well, I, I just tell you that, I mean, from the creative department himself at Titans, he sent me a text last night, like, unbelievable. I was like, yeah, that was done in about two hours' time. So, uh, you know, it's funny when you see that product come out, even some of those creative folks were talking like, you know, we don't want to have to babysit this internship. We were uncertain. Yesterday solidified it. No doubt. And you know what was interesting about uh, watching Brooks? Because from time to time I was, I was looking for him kind of blending in and that's what a person that does what he was doing that's what you do you don't yes. even really know they're there you know some people don't want to be behind the scenes some people want to be in front of the camera these folks you know it's like you just mentioned they were there they were working the event and you did not know they were even there and then all of a sudden this pops up you're like here's what we got that's I mean I expect that the these coming off of this process the the end, the end goal is to get these kids number one experience resume builders and potentially a job and there is no doubt that there's going to get some job offers off the back end of this with, with the talent they have. Uh, and they'll be involved in the Wilco Awards, too, coming up. So I'm going to say one more thing that we can move on, because I think this is important. School was let out two weeks ago. We met with them at the EIC the day after school was out. I had to kick them out of the EIC like gym, <laughs> gym rats, right? The event held at the Titan Stadium was done three weeks after school's out. We didn't have to beg them. They showed up. They produced. We're not. They're not even in their placement yet. They don't even have their schedules for next year. These kids are already working. And when I arrived yesterday, I was 15 minutes earlier than I told them we're going to meet. They, they were waiting on me. Pretty. And I and I wasn't late. How many teams did you have that, that you wanted to coach like that? Right. Every one of them. Every, every year I wanted to be that way. That's right. 
All right, let's jump into the Wilco Awards, uh, Dr. Qualls, but we had a lot of exciting stuff that we needed to talk about. We had to talk about flag football. We had to talk about outside the lines. Well, let's jump right into the Wilco Awards. We'll go right down the list and, and, and talk about these uh, young men and young women who are finalists. In the category of baseball, uh, Blake Beavis from Ravenwood, Hunter Davis, Fairview, Lucas Koshin, Ravenwood, Ethan McIlvain, Nolansville. What stands out to you there, Dr. Qualls? Well, it stands out when you start looking up the overall body of work, you have to think about who's been offered, who's not. Ethan McIlvain right now, Vandy on the table, that's enough said, right? You have to think, mm, man, it's going to be pretty strong, don't know how the voting body goes, but it usually, with my past experience, those offers awful way heavy. Have you seen, uh, I was curious about this, have you seen two from the same team as finalists before? Uh, no. Shows you what kind of year Ravenwood Yeah, had. right. And, you know, Coach Danny Bourne going out there and doing what he did with Ravenwood and those two guys being on there, that's huge. District pitcher of the year, you got to think about that. That's going to weigh pretty heavy on there. Will it be enough to outweigh uh, Michael Vane's offer? Don't know. Michael Vane's older brother on TV, watching him play the other night is pretty interesting. You know, he's a former Wilco guy. Uh, and Wilco winner, but uh, I, I share one story. I've already gone over time, but Marshall County, my friends down in Lewisburg, <laughs> going to get off the bus and play some Tiger Ball down there. They're going to show McIlvain the guys how to play some Tiger Ball. Seventeen strikeouts later, and back on the bus without a without a, a, a scoring run. They know the truth. McIlvain's pretty heavy. <laughs> yes. Girls basketball. Here's some names that if you oh, if you've talked about girls basketball at all the last few years, these are names that you recognize. Mackenzie Cochran from Page, Kate O'Neill, Franklin, Amelia Osgood, Brentwood, Lily Wilkin Page. Again, two finalists for the same school has to have something to do with that first ever state tournament trip for Page and Coach Brock. Yeah, I think that, that's going to have a lot of weight to it, especially when you say the last name, Wilkin. That's a Wilco favorite, has been for the last few years. I'm going to go out on a limb here, though, man. I'm going to tell you, Amelia Osgood, body of work over the last four years. Uh, uh, her, her commitment to, escapes me, um, a Division One program. She's going to be a really strong... Princeton. Princeton, thank you. A little Princeton offense. Kate O'Neill, 40-point game this year. Unbelievable. I think she's a breakout player of the year kind of style, but I think it comes down to Wilkin Osgood. We shall see. We shall see. Boys basketball. Again, some names uh, that have been uh, strong in the, in the area of basketball the past couple of years. Nick Dang. Ravenwood, you'll see his name again later. Reed Kemp, Franklin High School, back-to-back -back district MVP. Kennedy Pendergrass from Fairview, that Fairview program getting better uh, year after year. And then John Winley. Uh, the Winleys, I'd say there's a lot of coaches who are celebrating the graduation of John but with his brother that also played. There's been a Winley there for a long time. Well, put it, Winley in with Wilkin in, in the Wilcos. The same thing here. Going to Johns Hopkins, me and you both combined cheating on the test, couldn't get in there. But, <laughs> I, look, you can't out – the Reed Kemp is just – it's so heavy in this, in this category. So I, I figure that Reed's probably the heavy favorite to go into the Wilcos on this. Girls and boys bowling. Interesting when you take a look, and let's talk about those together. Of the eight finalists, all but one, Franklin or Centennial. You got Molly Austin of Brentwood, uh, and then from Franklin, girls finalists, Riley Gerritsen, Rachel Johnson, Maddie Yates, three from the same school. State runner-up, by the way, Franklin High School with Ted Logan, the coach. Uh, on the boys' side, you got Brian Keener from Franklin, uh, Drew Whalen from Franklin, and then you've got Jake Littlejohn, Frankie Negrone, from Centennial High School. Franklin and Centennial had great years on the boys and girls side. That's why you see those names from those schools. Yeah, I'm going to make a prediction that somebody from Franklin or Centennial wins this category. But <laughs> in all seriousness, you have to look at that postseason run. Uh, you start talking about state uh, qualifiers. You talk about who finished the, uh, the highest in the state. That's probably going to be your favorite in that. And you start looking at, like, Drew Whalen, he had a, you know finished fifth. He probably would be, that will serve him well in this category. Girls cross country, Alyssa Andrea, two-time state champion, sophomore there at Fairview. Uh, here's a name that we've gotten used to hearing. Halterman, Janie Halterman in this case, C Caitlin Vanderkolk, Lee Walters, another one. You were talking about this before the show. Uh, you, were, you were talking about some people that have been finalist four different years. Lee Walters, this is four years for her. It has been. Johnson, 
softball, Page. Who's doing okay now? And yes, and Bobby Barrels himself, Robert Hassel, who's tearing up the, the single A le, uh, league right now at Lake Eleanor out on the West Coast for the Padres organization. He was three years. You know why? That's right. That's right. I stand no, corrected. No baseball last spring. If yeah, yeah of course, let's be hypothetical. Of course, of course. But yes, I will say this: if if we would have put his name up, if we would have had an athlete of the year last year, we didn't because we didn't have a full year. He probably would have won. It's pretty phenomenal if you think about it. Eighth pick in the Major League Baseball is just it, it, top ten. Uh, it, it's hard to believe. But if you look back at this, man, this is a tough one. Do you go with the state champion? Do you go with the uh, 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 Walters, who's been there for four years? I mean, that's a tough one. they got a tough one. And then you look at uh, national champion Kathy Kroger at Indy that, that Halterman is creeping up on. I mean, it's, that's a tough category. It always is. Boys cross country. Nick Beatty, Nolensville, Hudson Hurst, Franklin. Ryan Keaton, Fairview, Kevin Vanderkolk, uh, Brentwood. He and his sister Caitlin will be attending Belmont next year. Uh, they'll be running there. Another, another fine group finalist in cross country. Let's talk a little football. One of your favorites to talk about. It's the hardest one every year. So football, three different categories, right? We got the defensive player of the year, the offensive player of the year, and then just the player of the year. That defensive group. I, I think I could probably coach football if I could put those four on my <laughs> on my squad. Junior Colson, Ravenwood, John House, Brentwood, Caleb Jolly, Summit, Grant Reader, Nolensville. Great group, Dr. Qualls. It really is. So here's what you have to think. Did the, did the voters go with the, uh, the prettiest of the show? Who's got the best offer? You look at that right now. Obviously, Junior Colson's got the Michigan. Uh, White House is at Vanderbilt. But then you go to Caleb Jolly, and it's like, this guy was on a state – championship team and he was you know and they they don't know that they win it without him he's both sides of the ball Caleb Jolly's a, I mean he is one of the tough nosed players here it's gonna be really interesting to see what the voting body does on this one well and it's interesting too and I think the Wilco's are, are unique in this way when you get all district kinds of awards during the season well that's voted on before the tournament starts this is truly the entire year. Body work. I, I, I think you're going to see, and, and some people, maybe they were the district MVP, but in the Wilco's, maybe someone it's else not, wins. It's not good enough. It really isn't. You start talking about that, you think about, the, the, you know, when we started this thing, everybody had their own individual awards, right? And that's great. You were all district. You were all summit. That's great. But you get in this right here, you get in this level, and if, if – for Caleb's instance, if he wins that, look at who he's beating out. It's big time. Big time. Football Offensive Player of the Year. Connor Bevan had a great year there at Franklin. Jackson Campbell, Independence, Destin Wade, Summit, Walker, Merrill, Brentwood. Again, some heavy hitters in that oh group too. I mean, who do you even, how do you even start this? As a voting body member, though, you have to look at this. If you take this player off the team, what happens? To me, you look at this just on surface without getting too deep. Destin Wade does not play for Summit, do they win the state championship? That's hard to say yes to, right? And I don't want to discredit anybody else on the team. I think Summit was a phenomenal team, phenomenal run, very well coached, Coach Coleman. But Destin Wade, is a, he's a great player. You take Walker Merrill off the team as a wide receiver, do they still win? Jackson Campbell, another strong argument for Coach Blade. This is, man, you've got a tough, tough group right here. Can you think of a year – where Coach Blade didn't have somebody in there for Offensive Player of the Year. That's pretty typical that he's, his quarterback yes. he's had is a player, in there. Yeah, he's had a player pretty much there every year. I, I can think of the Mississippi State kid, name escapes me, that was not the quarterback. He was the receiver and the cornerback. But, you know, when you throw the ball 42 times a game, there's a great chance that you're going to have a quarterback or receiver in there. And, by the way, Coach Blade definitely will be involved in – flag football at Independence High School. I can imagine. He loves the seven-on-seven seven stuff. I can't wait for him to see him at practice screaming at a girl, you got to get it out in point .3 seconds, <laughs> point .3, <laughs> point .3. That's fantastic. Football player of the year, again, some of the same names, uh, Connor Bevan Franklin, Destin Wade Summit, but also Jake Brenningstool. You're talking about offense and defense. You're talking about the look test of going to Clemson. He's already there. Cade Granzow, Brentwood, another tough category. Oh, man, it's so tough. You know, Jake, uh, you know, Brennan's still going to Clemson. I love the story of Kate Granzow in this, though. I mean, he's a two-sport athlete going to Auburn, playing baseball. Great player uh, for Brentwood. Uh, region player of the year. But is it enough? Destin Wade, Blue Cross Bowl MVP. 
Another tough category. This is going to be great. I can't wait to see how this one plays out. Girls golf, Brooke Brummett, Brent Wood, Sophia DiPaolo, Franklin, Shelly Jang, Ravenwood, Claudette Runk, Summit. As you look at golf in particular, because you, you know I play a little golf. You're a little better golfer than me, Dr. Qualls. Uh, <laughs> But she played longer. I'm, they, not, uh, I'm not sure we could beat any of these people. <laughs> no. Shelly Shelly Young, she's been, you know, she's a multi-time nominee, been there. You start looking at their average, 37.8 average, you know, it's pretty stout in, in high school. Um, well, what I was going to mention about golf, and you're alluding to it, golf is so fickle. You look at the pros. That's right. 65 one round, 82 the next. Mm -hmm. Postseason sometimes looks a lot different than during the year because you can have a bad round or two. It's pretty phenomenal if you think about it. You can go through and be the district player of the year and beat everybody, and then go into the state tournament and have one bad day and, and finish 50th, and all these other people beat. This is a tough one for the voters because you got to look at the overall body work. This is kind of the flip side of this one. You know, you look at the postseason, but you say, what have we done all? You know, if you average 35 the entire year and, and somebody else in the category averaged 38, you almost have to look at that overall average of the years. It's a tough one. Boys golf, Harrison Akers from Franklin, Colin Alexander, Ravenwood, Grant Clark Page, Troop, Wallace, Brentwood, uh, Teddy Craig. We, we, we've changed. We, now he's Mr. We can't really use October, but I guess right. we can. Mr. November, I guess, is what we would call him now. You know, he used to be Mr. May. Right. Now he's... <laughs> Solidly, done, he's done a really good job coaching golf there at Ravenwood. Yeah, he has. And I, I, I talked to him not too long ago about it. It's funny to listen to him take his approach, the baseball approach, right? The team concept yes. approach, which is pretty great. And uh, obviously, he's got kids in there, so this is going to be interesting to see at the same time as well. Body of work, forty-first at state. I see here some other things. You're going to look at the postseason. You're going to look at the overall body of work during the season. It's interesting. Girls soccer, Megan Carlson, Centennial. They had a nice year. Nora Henderson, Ravenwood, again, they end up winning the whole thing. Uh, Emma Shields, Franklin, they beat Franklin in the finals. She's co-district player of the year, Emma Shields. And then Mason Wells, Brentwood, a sport that we tend to dominate. We dominate a lot of sports, right? Eight state champions this year. But soccer's one that we're always in the mix in soccer. Well, soccer has this unique dynamic to it. They have the every, – every sport now has traveled – travel leagues and whatnot, but the, the soccer takes on a different approach when it comes to some of these travel deals because now you have an opportunity if you're a true All-American and be with Team USA at an early age. Uh, uh, so you start looking at the body of work. Once again, I, I sound like I'm a broken record player, but you look at Nora Henderson here, All-American, doing some things at the, at the national level, probably will hold weight with the voters. Boys soccer, again, you see Nick Dang of Ravenwood, also a finalist in basketball. Grayson Dugan, Page, they make it all the way to the state championship game. Ryan Hayes, Brentwood, Bradley Whalen, Franklin. Now, here's interesting. If, if this is just based on the regular season, Brentwood's boys, they pretty much dominated the league. Franklin was right there, but the team was Brentwood. But you fast forward, they play for the third time in the region final. Franklin wins. That causes Brentwood to have to go to station camp, which was going to be tough for Brentwood or Franklin. Now, Brentwood doesn't make the state tournament. Franklin wins a round in the state tournament, and it's almost like the Hayes year. It not, I don't want to say forgotten. I don't want to diminish it. But you tend not to remember as yeah. much because they didn't make it to the state tournament, and Franklin did. Your last loss is usually freshest in the minds, or win, freshest in the minds of the voters. So you start looking at that. Who made it the first? Well, Franklin did, or, or, or Brentwood did, or whoever the case may be. But in this case, they're going to start looking at that, that postseason run. You can forget the fact that, hey, we beat them three times. Well, you didn't make it because they did make it and won that game. So it will definitely, I would say, weigh heavy on the minds of the voters. Softball, Lena Escobar from Summit. Again, first trip to the state tournament. They finished third. Josie Polk from Page High School, Morgan Salmon from Brentwood, Avery Wismar from Ravenwood. Now, I, I want you to tell this story. Avery, one of your students over at the EIC, tell, tell the audience about that discussion you guys had when she was talking about being a district player of the year. There's something that came up with pitcher of the year, but she talked about the Wilcos. Well, at the Entrepreneurship Innovation Center, she's part of the cohort in there, and uh, uh, Kids Fun Crate, by the way, which is a, a business that creates a subscription box for kids to create their own projects and do crafts, right? Was top five in our in our whole thing, and she was a part of that process. And getting up there to see a student athlete pitch in front of the whole mentors and all these other uh, folks, uh, going for five thousand dollars from Belmont is pretty neat. But anyway, that's a sidebar story. She is going to Georgetown, 
and going to major in international affairs. But we're talking about, as I get a relationship with her, we're talking about the Wilco's and all this coming up, and she's coming in the office, she sees all the coins and stuff, and she was talking about, I was like, you know, you've had a great gateway player of the year. She's like, yeah, but I, I just want to be in the Wilco's. You think it, I was like, that's pretty interesting, right? She wants to be a finalist in the Wilco. She wants to participate. She's, you know, she's happy that she won all those other awards, but she wants a Wilco. That's big time. I loved hearing that story. Goes to show you what a, what a special event it is. Girls tennis, Caitlin Lee, Brentwood, Lisa Messier, Franklin, Grace Stout, Ravenwood, Lauren Terry Fairview. Now, Tate and I talk about this a lot, and you're going to see a finalist in boys tennis also from Fairview. Fairview is a school. I talk a lot about it. I'm, I'm on the Fairview train now. I'm just telling you I am. Fairview was a school, I think, a few years ago. The, the, the flag holder was Chris Hughes. Football. Hey, look what football's doing. Look what football. And they're still doing great. But then enter basketball, boys basketball. Coach Trey McCoy. Four district championships. Girls had a great year this year. Uh, wrestling, first ever team state title uh, at Fairview. Then you take a look at uh, Alyssa Andrea, a couple state titles. Ryan Keaton wins a state title in track. Fairview, can you remember there being finalists in tennis? From Fairview High School, and uh, let's be, let's just be honest. I, I mean, golf, tennis, things like that. Uh, the Big Six have always had the corners on that, and now you got Fairview creeping in on it. I mean, to have a tennis finalist from Fairview is strong. Hats off to Lauren Terry and and uh, uh, anybody else from from Fairview that gets in. That, because let's be let's look at it on that Triple A level. That tennis, since you're a tennis player, which by the way <laughs> you're better than me, you've been playing longer. <laughs> That on that but, and by the way, both of those are true. On the tennis, <laughs> on the tennis, on the tennis front, these kids are as good as they get. I'm talking nationally ranked, everything else. So, hats off to, to for those Fairview folks getting in on the tennis side. On the boys' side, Skylar Crunk, Polston of Fairview, Patrick Delves, Ravenwood, Donovan Janicek, or Janicek, excuse me, Brentwood, Jackson Stone, Ravenwood. Two from Ravenwood, they win. Coach Bates and Ravenwood, the boys' team. State title, obviously, uh, that was fresh on the minds of the voters and very well deserved. Jackson ends up winning the doubles uh, championship with his teammate Ethan Eisenhower too. So Jackson obviously had a great year. Yeah, good luck picking the winner of that one. I know that Donovan has been a uh, this is his second, maybe third. Uh, Would have been third if we had last right, year. Right, right. So Donovan has been in there, but uh, uh, th that's a tough group. A sport that's very near and dear to your heart: track, girls track. Elise Dobson, Nolansville, Reagan Grimes, Ravenwood, Holland Powers, Brentwood, Lee Walters again showing up from Page. And, and what I love about this, you've got Holland Powers, who is the state pentathlon champion, Elise Dobson, who is second in the state pentathlon. You've got Miss Grimes, multi sport athlete, uh, wins the discus and shot put. And then you got Walters. Not only effective in track, effective in cross country too. That's a tough one. It's it's really tough. I, 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 you look at Holland Powers. You want to talk about an overall student athlete? That is a definition of one, right? You go through, you, you get into the pentathlon. You have to place basically in the top three of every one of those competitions to even have a chance to win that. Reagan Grimes goes out, does what her dad did back in the day, wins the state championships. At least Dobson. Uh, holding the record, and and I don't know if this is the same young female. Tell me that won the high jump from Nolensville as well. First school state championship. That's five, right. Five six. Let me put this in perspective for you, DJ. I've been doing this longer than you have on the high jump perspective, right? <laughs> uh, Second in the state yourself, oh, right? Let's not even talk about that. <laughs> in the boys double A this year, top ten. I think eighth, seventh, sixth, five four. Wow. She jumped higher than some of the boys that placed in the top ten level. Wow. Five six is is a very very good jump for a female. Holland Powers, Tate and I were talking about this a week or two ago. Uh, she's on the state champion Brentwood team. That was the worst kept secret going that they were going to uh, win the state title. We knew that early on they were. Holland, if she would have been a team by herself, she would have finished sixth. Well, that puts it in perspective. <laughs> so you got to ask yourself, who's the best athlete out of that group? Man, it's so tough. That's a, that's that's one of the harder, that's one of the harder categories we've come across, really. I mean, because when you have multiple winners in there, then who do you pick? 
Boys track, Ryan Keaton, state champion there from Fairview, Patrick Lama of uh, Franklin, Gabriel Robinson, Ravenwood, Sam Sullivan, Brentwood. Uh, you get Sam from Brentwood finishes seventh in the, de in the decathlon, another tough event. Patrick, eighth in the decathlon. Mr. Robinson, third in the 800 at the state meet. So another strong category, boys track. Moving on to volleyball. Destiny Cherry, Summit High School. Shea Eggleston, two-time Gatorade Player of the Year for Tennessee from Brentwood. Charlie Fulton, Nolensville. Lauren Starkey, Nolensville. Are you surprised? Even though they both won state champions, you get two from Nolensville as opposed to two from Brentwood. Well, you know, first off, hats off to those that made the finalist, really. But I know how the voters are going to go on this one. It's pretty heavy. I mean, right? I, I don't know that I can answer your question. Nolensville's done a remarkable job. Uh, they had an unbelievable run uh, in continuing that run. But Shea Elkelston, two-time best player in the state, nationally recognized, Division I, going to a heavy uh, Power Five school, and not forget who her sister is. That's, that's all you got to say, and that just weighs heavy on the minds of the voters. Hats off to all you in that category, but I think this is going to barely be, be uh, unanimous. And speaking of, of older sister, Logan played in the national title and lost to... You put me on the spot. You Kentucky. Have. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> well, let's, let's look at this. When you watch the Tokyo Olympics, there's a great chance that you'll be seeing her <laughs> on the Olympics. I agree. And that will be the first in my time here in seven years that I can ever think of. And I, we'll have to do some research on that. Might be the first Olympian. It's yeah, it's pretty, impressive. Pretty, pretty phenomenal. Impressive. A sport we're really growing in and doing a good job wrestling overall, but in particular girls wrestling. You got uh, Nevia Brinson from Summit, two-time state medalist as a finalist for the Wilcos. Livia Kalinga, Spain from Fairview, sixth at the state tournament this year. Erica Moore, Brentwood, uh, finished fourth at the state championships, first for Brentwood at the state, having, having a girl there. And then Bailey Peterson from Independence, who finishes second in the state. She's voted the most outstanding wrestler on the team uh, at Independence. So, Pretty strong group there. Very strong. I think they ought to make this category winner by making them wrestle Tate and see who wins <laughs> in that. It's, you know, hats off to all these coaches that are taking the time to do this and have grown that sport so so much. I mean, it's it's awesome to see these kids. And I love this group because they usually have – it's every year it never fails that we have uh, 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 some – awesome shoe wear coming out of the wheel coach, coming out of this group. So I'd be interested to see how it goes. But uh, hats off to all the coaches, hats off to the programs, hats, hats off to these finalists. And Independence, uh, they were on that girls wrestling train early. Early. They had more participating earlier than any other school. So uh, I think that's why you see Bailey there. On the boys wrestling side, Alex Abel, Centennial High School, Riley Bennett, Fairview, who breaks through and wins a state championship after being third or second three straight years. Uh, he ends up uh, with his state championship. He was voted most outstanding wrestler at the state tournament. Riley Lippincott, Nolensville, Tanner Willett, Independence. Willett and Lippincott on the strength of their regular season uh, getting here. Had some issues they had to deal with in the postseason, but uh, certainly well deserved being amongst this group. Well, you start looking at Bennett and look at his overall body of work, it's pretty hard to dispute it. And, you know, people will make the argument small school AA versus big school AAA, but if they had any cross, I don't know that Fairview, you would know if they, if they compete against each other, what was his record against the big six? Hey, here's what I will say. This, this was pretty impressive. And when we talked about this earlier in the year. Summit, who finished third in the big school duels, had one loss during the season. To Fairview. That's enough said. I think I mean, that's going to weigh pretty heavy on the I'm on telling the you, Fairview probably, they did have. They had the yeah. best team in the district. Yeah, that's pretty impressive. And I'm saying sports conference, the Williams County Sports Conference. Female Athlete of the Year, obviously some names that we've seen before. Shea Eggleston, Brentwood, Reagan Grimes, Ravenwood, Highland Powers, Brentwood, Lee Walters, Page. Here's the question, Dr. Qualls. Is it strength of I'm so dominant in this one sport? like an Eggleston, or do you start looking at, say, a Grimes? Three sport athlete, volleyball, basketball, track. So historically, we'll go back and look. Historically, you look at Eggleston was so dominant 
older sister, not Shay, but Logan in the past, female athlete of the year, Wilco's uh, 2019, right? So dominant in her sport, single sport athlete, that she wins it. You go back, Jenny Roy, not necessarily as dominant, but such a good leader, such a great player in both basketball and wins it. You go back and you start looking on the boys' side, you start looking at that. Reese Glover, name a better basketball player that's come through in the last how many years? So dominant, didn't win it, right? Darius James wins it, dominant at football, great at basketball. So it's gone back and forth. This is gonna be a tough one. It's gonna be interesting to see how they It happen. is. Uh, on, the, on the boys' side, now here's one that, that's interesting to me, because you mentioned James. Fairview has been in this category quite a bit, yes. right, in terms of having the male athlete of the year. You got Riley Bennett Fairview, Nick Dang, Ravenwood, Reed Kemp, kind of like the Glover example, dominant in that one sport. Destin Wade, Summit, not only is he a dominant football player, but take a look at his basketball stats. 16 points a game, five rebounds a game, three steals per game. He's all district. Pretty hard to argue with Destin there. Uh, yeah, it's it's. this is another tough one. Uh, I mean, Riley Bennett, great, great resume coming in. Destin Wade, great resume. Nick Dane, great. Uh, Reed being dominant at basketball, but being that one sport, I feel like, whew, I don't know that I can pick this one off the bat, but I, once again, I think the winner of this category will definitely play more than one sport. I'm going to predict that. Interesting. Let's talk about our female sports coach of the year. A name that we've seen a lot in this category, Barbara Campbell, Brentwood Volleyball, volleyball 16 overall state champions, eight in a row, Jessica Mancini, Ravenwood Soccer, Jenny Stevenson, Summit Softball, Brett Young, Nolensville Volleyball. Great category. You've got three state champions in there, and then you've got Jenny Stevenson, who really has built that Summit program. Not only they make the state tournament, they finish third. Yeah, I mean, death, taxes, and Brentwood Volleyball. How many people dream of winning their last ball game as a coach? Obviously, she, he, she has done that. So do they go with overall sentiment, body of work, or do we go look at like what Brett Young has done? Look at what Jessica Mancini has come in and done. So it's, uh, that's, a, that's a tough category. It really is. Male sports coach of the year, Nate Clapp, Page High School, again, state runner-up uh, for Page. Brian Coleman, state champion there at Summit. Ron Crawford, state runner-up, Brentwood. And then Bubba Derrick, Fairview Wrestling, state champion. I mean, this cream right here, cream of the crop. I think it comes down to a two-dog, two-horse race. And it's going to be Brian Coleman, Bubba Derrick. I think it's going to come down to a two-horse race on this deal. And I really think that I don't even want to predict. It's too tough. <laughs> it's too tough. Hey, listen, you will uh, make somebody mad because they'll be watching. And you'll be getting texts. If you make too much of a prediction there, I, I'm not. I'm, I'm not. Gonna, I'm going to stay away from it because Old Sparty and them they'll be put. Well, I'll tell you what. If I pick Old Sparty, Fairview leaves notes on my car, and if I pick Fairview, I'll be getting texts from them. But I do think it's a two horse race between those two guys. Female team of the year: couple for Brentwood, Brentwood girls track, Brentwood volleyball, Nolensville volleyball, Ravenwood soccer. And an aside to this, really could have made an argument for Brentwood cross country being in here. Think about this, and it shows you how strong this category is. Brentwood Cross Country doesn't make it, and they won every single meet that they were in this year, and they're not a finalist. This will coincide with Coach of the Year. Usually does, usually follow suit, and uh, whoever wins Coach of the Year, I figure it will fall uh, likely same, usually. Interesting. Male Team of the Year, Brentwood Football, Fairview Wrestling, Ravenwood Tennis, Summit Football, same prediction, you think it'll fall Absolutely. in line? Absolutely. That's a two-horse race, and whoever wins, that, whoever wins that coach of the year, I feel like it will fall asleep. Uh, the next two categories I want to talk about, and these are special groups. They mean a lot when, it, when you're talking about uh, excitement at the games, uh, uh, getting the crowd involved, our cheer uh, and dance teams. And, and, and I'm going to tell you this, and I know you believe this too, when you want to talk about athleticism, Listen, the days of this not requiring athleticism, those are long gone. Some great athletes in this group. I mean, they, just think of the time put in. This is a year-round sport. I mean, they, they put the time and efforts and the choreography that goes into it. You, you name it, everything. I mean, we couldn't do it, even no. if we did have the athletic ability to do it. <laughs> Cheerleading, Maggie Carlisle, Summit, Abby Jordan, Brentwood, Laurel McLaughlin, uh, Ravenwood, Jesse May, Merrill Franklin. On the dance side, you got Annie Bonner, Addie Bonner, excuse me, from Brentwood, Kate Burchell from Centennial, Olivia Potmeyer 
Ravenwood. And the next group, I want you to talk about this, because this is a special one to you for a lot of different reasons. You came mm -hmm. up with this category in the position that I'm in now, because it meant a lot to you. It means something a little different to you, I think, now, because this is, this is the group that you oversee, the Media Student of the Year. Talk about this category and who's in it. Well, if you want to talk about getting traction within a school culture, letting people know what's going on, the front porch of the school, obviously, we always said this, is athletics, right? But how do you get that information out? It comes through these, these outlets. And these folks are truly phenomenal in what they do. Their teachers are great. The programs are unbelievable. We have uh, the max you can have in a class is 25. They're always maxed out uh, with the max amount of periods. So you look at those folks, Stuart Beaton of Brentwood, uh, Ryan Griggs of Page, Sarah Scott Cook, Franklin, Sam Wilde, Independence. Uh, you know, those, those, those students each have an individual, their own spin their own taste on what content's being created and how it's put out. Uh, Sarah Scott Cook has been one of those kids that have worked tirelessly across Franklin taking pictures at all his games. Uh, Ryan Griggs works pretty awesome with uh, his, his eight-part series about independence football and all those things going on. These kids are winning numerous... Sam Wild was the independence. Sam Wild, I apologize. Sam Wild from Independence. But they have won uh, nominations for Emmys and won those Emmys and, and student Emmys and all these programs. Uh, Brentwood's kid at uh, Western Kentucky uh, swept all the awards he was in. So it's just, it's pretty phenomenal of what they do and the content they put out. Well, and think about this. I think this shows the strength. The audience earlier got to see some work from Brooks Taylor, and he wasn't a finalist. That's right. Which is, film student at Ravenwood. I mean, yep. It's a pretty impressive group, so uh, I know you, you're proud of them. We all certainly are, and they do a great job promoting athletics. Well, what I love about it most is, and you'll see it on the red carpet, when they show up, they have, you know, they're outside the box, right? So they may may not have a tux on, or they may have something crazy, shirt on under the tux, but the, the excitement that they are a part of that event is pretty cool. Some other awards we'll give out that night, the uh, Sports Conference Student Athlete of the Year, uh, the John Mayer Builder Sportsmanship Award, which we talked about. I know you developed that relationship with Mr. Mayer. Uh, the Sports Conference Sponsor of the Year, certainly important to us. I mean, obviously this award's uh, the Wilco's presented by Walker Chevrolet, who's just a tremendous sponsor. But we've got some other sponsors, too, uh, that, we, that we like to recognize uh, during this event as well. The Courage Award, uh, one that's been around a while. Of course, we'll do the Director's Cup, which, hey, I'm telling you, you take a look. We were talking about this last week. Franklin High School, four team state runners up. Brentwood, three team titles. That, Could it be the highest finish for Franklin High School maybe. In, in the years of it? Yeah. Maybe. I think they were third, third a year, maybe, uh, which was which pretty high. It was third the highest. Maybe, or, maybe. Maybe they're. Ravenwood Brentwood has gone one, two every year. So one, of those third, is, yeah. one of those has won it every year. Yeah. And then obviously Fairview, talk about the strength of their year, got that state champion. So. Uh, they're going to be hard to beat there. One that's been added, and it's one you and I talked about, the multi-sport athlete of the year. We're going to recognize multi-sport athlete, which is very near and dear to my heart. And I know it is your too, yours too. And we've said it many times. Brentwood High School, I think it's hard to argue that they have been, it'd be hard to argue that they haven't been the most dominant athletic program over the years, Brentwood High. They've had more multi-sport athletes, and they continuously do, than any school in WCS. Well, when you crunch it down and you look at it, not only do they have the most multi-sport athletes, they've got the most state championships in the public sector of anybody in the state. So if that doesn't tell you, if that doesn't speak volumes of individualized pepperoni pizza, one top and pizzas, that doesn't work anymore, my friend. It never has worked. You've got to have the supreme pizza. You've got to have them playing every sport, and they've got to, hey, it's, Proofs in the pudding. No doubt. Looking forward to the folks here at WCTV will be live streaming the Wilco's. We're excited about that, them being a part of that, and we appreciate what they do for us, not only for this show, but throughout the year. Uh, Dr. Qualls, looking forward to seeing you at the Wilco's, and you're going to have a different look on your face. You'll be stress-free, although you might be a little nervous when you're up there giving out the media student of the year. Well, I... I you're right, because I can always mess something up. Mr. Producer knows that. I want to give a shout-out to those guys behind the scenes here. It's great to see those guys. It's been a long time. But, yeah, I'm looking forward to it. You're going to do a great job like you always do. It's going to be a fun night for all those athletes and parents. Well, I think it was fitting that, uh, again, we hate that, that Tate's out on assignment, so to speak, but it's very fitting that you're here for the Wilco Awards. 
uh, broadcast because I know it's so, it's so near and dear to your heart, and we certainly appreciate you getting this thing started. Thank you for having me. Thank you for joining us for Sports Connection. We'll see you next time.